people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend, it's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson, <laughs> and I would like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. Glory be to God. <laughs> Father, we are so grateful yet again for another opportunity to study the Word of God today. Pray that you would bless those who are hearing and reading the Word of God with me today. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you will arrest everybody by the Spirit of God today, and that you will settle everybody in their mind and in their hearts today. I pray for everybody that's viewing the telecast today, Father, that whatever's on their heart and their mind, you will bring peace. The Bible says that you will keep us in perfect peace, those of us whose minds are stayed on you. And so I pray now in the name of Jesus that for these few moments, we'll keep our mind stayed on you. We'll stop doing whatever we're doing and keep our minds stayed on you. And I'm sure, I'm sure that if we pay attention, <laughs> you'll give us exactly what we pay for. We give you glory and we give you praise for that. Father, I thank you for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. You have all power and dominion. You have all power and dominion. I love you so very, very much for being the God of my life. Watch over each and every viewer right now. Give us deep revelation and insight of your word according to your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. All of a sudden, the, the joy of the Lord has just hit me in my spirit. <clears throat> and so I'm, I'm feeling extra special right now, family. Welcome to A Word Thing. And we've been dealing, I want to get right into the teaching today. We've been dealing with the, the subject matter of the miracle working power of God in our life. And we've been talking about some different things. We've also been talking about the rest. We've been talking about entering into the rest of God because God said it's time for you to rest. He said some of y'all are sick, but you're not sick because of disease and stuff like that. You're sick because you're worried, because you're worried about situations and circumstances in your life. He had me to say to you that everyone that listens to what he says through the man of God, follow his instructions, be obedient to him, he said, you will get your miracle, you will get your breakthrough uh, in, this, in this season, in this hour. This is the year 2019, the year of a new thing. Watch now, the 10 times better astronomical growth and increase. And we've been saying to you the reason why some of us are not being able to experience that because of a lack of faith, a lack of faith in God. And so the Lord had me to say, the Holy Spirit had me to say that unbelief stifles the power of God in the life of the believer. Unbelief will stifle the power of God and hinder the power of God from moving in your life. And so when we look at that word, when we look at the word stifle, when we look at the word stifle, here's what it means when you look at the word stifle. It means, watch this, to make someone unable to breathe properly, to keep someone from being able to breathe properly stifle. It means to choke or to suffocate, to restrain or to keep one restricted, to, to stop oneself from acting uh, on emotion. Look, at, look, look what else stifle means though. Watch now. To suppress, to keep back, and to hold back. To suppress, to keep back, and to hold back. Glory to God. The word stifle all means to hold in and to keep in check, to hold in and to keep in check, to keep one from moving or being able to move. It also means to quench. It also means to quench. The Bible talks to us about quenching the Holy Spirit, stifling, keeping the Holy Spirit from being the God in your life. And so I want to say something to you because this is a special, a special broadcast today. And I wrote some things down, and I want to read to you what the Holy Spirit gave to me for us today. He said, have you ever been watching a program on television and the network interrupted the program? <laughs> and the network interrupts the program. Have you ever been watching TV, my friend, and you watch one of your favorite shows and the, the network interrupts the program and says that they want to bring you a special bulletin? 
They say they have a special announcement. There's something live, something going on critical, and they want to talk to you about it, so they interrupt whatever your programming is. So the Holy Spirit told me to tell you that this is what this program is. This is an interruption of the program in your life. This is the interrupting of the program. Whatever is going on, been going on, this is to interrupt that right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So watch this, my friend. He says, so, so this program, he said he is interrupting the program of your life today to bring you this special good news bulletin. So please pay attention to this life-changing message, and I promise you will get what you pay for, and I promise you will get what you pay for. And so I want to start by saying this, because we just talked about how unbelief will stifle the power of God or the move of God from working in your life. And so the Lord had me to write this down. He said, fear, doubt, and unbelief, watch this, is blocking the entrance of God's rest. Watch now. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking the entrance to God's rest. This is good, friend. Listen, you need to hear what God is saying. This is a special announcement. This is a special bulletin for you, life-changing for you. This is going to change everything for you today. If you listen or pay and pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying, it's going to change life for you. He say, fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking the entrance to God's rest for you. He say, they are standing guard at the entrance of God's resting place for you. They are standing guard. Now, I need for you to understand something about this. Who placed those three guards there, fear, doubt, and unbelief? The devil. Because fear, doubt, and unbelief is working for the devil. And so they are standing at the entrance. When Jesus, when Jesus was crucified, they buried him in the borrowed tomb. And so they go and tell the king, this man said when he died in three days, he was going to rise again. And so we want to make sure that nobody come and steal his body and say that he rose again. And so the king told him, okay, well, you stand watch over it and you stand guard over it. And so what they did was they put guards around it and they sealed it with the king's signet so nobody could go in and move it. So watch now, just like they placed <coughs> guards at the tomb uh, of Jesus' burial, the, uh, the Holy Spirit said that fear, doubt, and unbelief has been, has been placed as guards to the entrance of God's resting place for you. Watch now. Because God said it's time for you to rest. It's time for you to come out of doubt, fear, and unbelief and rest in him. It's time for you to believe in him so that you can enter into rest. Watch this. So that you can receive the rest of what God has for you. We, we, we're going to get there, friend. Watch this. He say, and they, meaning fear, doubt, and unbelief, are keeping you from having the rest of what God has for you in 2019. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is keeping you, my friend, from having the rest of what God has for you in 2019. Well, in order for you to get the rest of what God has, first of all, you had to enter into his rest. That means, watch this, that means you're going to remove those who are standing guard, fear, doubt, and unbelief, out of the way, out from the entrance of God's resting place for you. Watch this now. He said, your resting place is in Jesus. Your resting place is in Jesus. So watch this. I'll be able to rest when I put my trust and my faith in Jesus. Now, I really thought my first verse was going to be 2 Timothy 1.17, but it's Acts is not, though. It's Acts chapter 17. Let's go to Acts chapter 17, my friends. Acts chapter 17. This, this, is, this is for you today, friend. This is for you today. This is for you today. This is a special announcement. This is a special announcement. I pray that you, please get your Bibles right now, friend. Get your Bibles right now. Sit down and pay attention to what God is saying to you today. In Acts chapter 17, I want to start at verse number 28. Acts 17, I want to start at verse number 28 and listen to what it says in Acts chapter 17. Let me get in the right place here. Starting at verse number 28, Acts 17 and 28, friend, listen to what it says. Yeah. For in him, meaning Jesus, we live 
and move, watch this, this is a critical word, and have, and have. Remember the word have because fear, doubt, and, and unbelief is blocking the entrance to, to the resting place of God, which is keeping you from having the rest, which is keeping you from having the rest of what God has for you. Because until you can walk in, in uh, faith in God and trust in God, you can't have the rest of what God has for you. For in him we live and move and have our being. Watch now, as certain also of your young poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Remember, those of us who are born believers, born again believers are God's offspring. For as much as then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by arts and man's devices. That means they don't have any ability to do anything for you. Watch now. And the time is of this ignorance God winked at. But now command all men everywhere to repent. See, this is the deal. When, when God started talking to me, when the Holy Spirit started talking to me this year about this being the year of the new thing, the 10 times better, and the astronomical growth and increase, he said, the only way we're going to be able to position ourselves to be able to experience that is we're going to have to repent. Watch this, friend. This is important. You had to repent for doubting God. You had to repent for doubting and not believing God, friend, because to doubt God, to walk in fear and not belief is a sin, friend. God has, God has not forsaken you. Uh, God has never failed you. And so for us to be walking in fear, doubt, and unbelief, that means that we don't trust the God we say that we love. There's no way you can say you believe in God or you believe God, but you can't believe God for the things that God is saying to you. This is a special message for today, friend. I prayed and I was asking God in my, in my quiet time this morning, my prayer time, God, how do I approach the people today? I, I got the material and stuff that you want me to, but how do I approach them today? I need the right approach today. He said, this is the approach. He said, tell them fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking the entrance of my resting place and of the rest that belongs to them, the rest of what I have for them. Watch, friend, this is important. This is important, this is important now. This is important. He say, in the time of this ignorance, God winked at. But now command all men everywhere to repent. And so, friend, I need you to repent for doubting God. I need you to repent for saying that you believe in God, but you really don't have no faith in God, friend. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking the entrance. Is standing at is standing God at the entrance at the entrance of God's uh, resting place for you, and it's keeping you, friend, from being able to experience the rest of what God has for you. This is this is some good stuff right here, friend. Not because Bishop Stevenson saying it, because the Holy Spirit gave it to me for us today. So watch this now. Your resting place is in Jesus. It's where you live, move, and have your being. You can't have the things that God wants for you until you enter into your resting place, and your resting place is in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, she's a new creature, all things are passed away. Watch now. Behold, all the new things that God has for you, you can have now. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Every new thing that God want to give to you, friend, can come to you once you enter into the resting place called Jesus Christ. He's the resting place. He's the place, friend. In him we live, move, and have our being. But in him is the rest of what God has for you. In him <clears throat> is the fullness of God and the Godhead bodily. In him, in him, friend. And so I, will, I really want us to really pay close attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Watch this now. He said, now the rest of what God has for you, watch this. Watch my friend, this is important. The rest of what God has for you, watch this, you enter into the resting place called Jesus, and the rest of what God has for you is the new thing, the ten times better the astronomical growth and increase. Watch this, though, friend. The, the rest of what God has for you, because the Holy Spirit didn't have me to tell you, he's getting ready to heal some of y'all from some stuff you've been dealing with for a long time. 
He's getting ready to heal you from it, friend. So the rest, for some of you, the rest is also healing. The rest is also breakthrough for you, friend. Listen to this, friend. This is good stuff. Listen to this. He say, and for some of you, some of you, for some of you, the rest is a career, employment that's going to change your life forever. I wrote it down, friend. I wrote it down. It came straight from the throne room of glory. I wrote it down. This is special. This is a special message for you today. So, so watch what he says. He said, when you erase fear and doubt, he said, when you erase fear, doubt, and unbelief, he said, you can enter into his rest so that you can have the rest of what God has for you. So that you can have the rest of what God has for you. Hallelujah. So let's take a look at this, friend. This is, this is some good stuff right here, friend. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Hallelujah. As we flow with the Holy Spirit, let's take a look at this. Because it's, in, it's important that you understand that until I enter into the resting place, I can't have the rest of what God has for me because it's only when I get into that place, I'm going to have access to it. The Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that in Christ, we have access to the things of God. In him, we have access. In him, we have access. <clears throat> <clears throat> we have access through, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God is looking for us to, to believe in him. In, in Hebrews chapter 4, because I need to show you this, I need to show you this about, about us entering into the rest. Because the unbelief, unbelief is keeping me from getting there. In he Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, am I right? Yeah, Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 4, starting at, at verse number 1. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to your friend. This is for you. You got you to gotta own this, friend. Say, this is for me. Come on, friend. Say, this is for me. Say, God is talking to me right now. Because the things that's keeping me from getting into the resting place and experiencing the rest, my, what is my rest, friend? The rest that God has for me is the new thing, the 10 times better, the astronomical growth and increase, my healing, my breakthrough. Watch now. He said, and some of y'all, it's the career that you've been looking for, the career that you need. And he said, this career is going to change your life forever. Hallelujah. God is so good, friend. Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Let us therefore, watch now, the first word we see here is fear. Let us therefore fear least a man, at least a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. You don't want to come short of your gift. You don't want to come short of the resting place. Notice the first word he said is, let us therefore fear. This means reverence. At least a promise being left us entering into the rest. I can't enter the rest. I can't enter into the rest if I don't reverence God. But I also can't enter into the rest of God fearing which is something that God didn't give us. And we're going to get there in a minute, friend, I promise you. He don't want you to come short of it. He don't want you to come short of the promise. What is the promise, Bishop? The promise is this is the year of a new thing, not the season, not the hour. This is the year of a new thing, and we're in the third quarter. This is the year of a new thing. This is the promise. He said this is the year of a new thing, 10 times better, astronomical growth and increase. This is the year, the rest of your healing. This is your healing. This is the year for your healing. Your, your, your divine healing, friend, this is the year for your breakthrough. And this is the year, he said, that some of you is getting ready to get a career that's getting ready to change your life forever. Hear what the Lord is saying to you, friend. Hear what the Lord is saying to you. This is a special message today. Verse 2, for unto us has the gospel, for, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, watch this, not mixing with faith in them that heard it. See, friend, you, you hearing this word from God, you hearing this promise from God, but you won't mix your faith with it. You, you won't add your faith to it. You won't trust and believe what God is saying. And that's keeping you from entering to the rest. 
keeping you from being so worried to death and worried to sickness and disease. It's keeping you, the unbelief friend, is stifling the power of God from working in your life. Don't allow this to, to, keep, to, to cause you to fall short of the promise, friend. Oh, I love this right here, friend. He said the, the only thing that's keeping you, friend, from having it is you hearing the word, but you won't mix faith to it. You hearing the word, but you letting it go. You know how they say in one ear and out the other. No, no, friend, when the word of God come, grab hold to the word of God and don't allow the word of God to escape you. Hold on to it, friend, until, watch this, until your change come, until you get exactly what God done promised you. Don't allow fear, doubt, and unbelief to cause you to fall short of the promise. It's right here in the scriptures, friend. It's right here in the scriptures. Watch this now. You're going to have to add your faith to it. You got to hear what God is saying and believe it, friend. I'm, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here for my own for my own well-being. I'm not here for me at all, friend. I'm here, I'm here for you. I'm presenting this word to you from God because God say fear, doubt, and unbelief, watch this, is blocking the interest of your resting place and of the rest of what God has for you. They are standing God over it, friend. They are standing God over the interest of it, friend, to keep you from entering into the resting place and experiencing the rest of what God has for you. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is, but they there because you're allowing them to be there friend. Yeah, they from the devil and they of the devil, but you allowing the devil who's a liar friend to speak into your ear. Now, now, now see, now this straight from glory right here. Some of y'all allowing people to tell you, don't listen to that man on that TV. He, he's a false prophet. There's nothing false about what I'm saying, friend. I'm coming straight out of the word of God, friend. And you allowing people to tell you, don't listen to me. You're not listening to me, friend. I'm speaking for God. I'm an ambassador for Christ, friend. I'm here delivering. I'm a male man for the Holy Ghost, delivering your message to you today, friend. Do not let people tell you Man, that's what the Holy Spirit just said. He said, you, you allowing people to tell you I'm a false prophet. Don't believe what I'm saying to you. Watch this, friend. Verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into the rest. You see how you enter into the rest, friend, through believing. He say, watch this, for we which have believed do enter into the rest. And he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although, watch this, the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He say, this stuff he's talking about has been finished from the foundation of the world. It's already finished in glory, friend. Your faith is what makes it come to you. It's your faith that gives you what God has already predestined and prerequisited for you, friend. Your faith is going to make that happen for you. Verse 4, for he speaketh in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. God wants you to rest, friend. You, you working yourself over time, doubting and unbelief and, and walking in fear, friend. You, you believe in that, that your life is supposed to be like this, and it ain't going to ever get better, and the devil lying to you, and that's why God done sent me into your life, friend. And this, verse 5, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, see therefore and, and remain it that some must enter therein. You're going to have to enter in, friend. And they to whom it, is, it was first preached entered not into because of unbelief. God called all those folks out of Egypt, but a whole bunch of them died off, friend. They died off because they didn't believe the man of God. They didn't trust Moses who was getting it from God. Some of y'all are going to die, friend, because you won't believe the man of God. You can't trust the man of God because you're allowing somebody to tell you don't trust the man of God, friend. But I'm going to tell you like this, friend. You ain't got to trust me, but you can trust the God that I serve. Jesus said, if you don't believe me, just consider the work. Consider the work that I do. Verse number 7. And again, he limited a certain day, saying unto David today, after so long a time, as, he has, as it is said, today, if thou will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Friend, you've been going through this a long time. He, you've been going through this a long time, friend. And God is saying, you'll get delivered from it. You're going to get healed from it this year. You're going to get the new thing to 10 times better, the astronomical growth and increase. You're going to get it this year, friend, if you just don't harden your heart, friend. 
I heard a guy say the other day, he said that uh, we use and we misquoting and misusing uh, 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 Revelation 3.20. I know that, he, that, that Jesus was talking to the church, friend. He wasn't talking to unbelievers, but the principle is for unbelievers, friend, because Jesus is wanting to enter into your life, but you have to allow him to come in. He's knocking at the door of your heart, friend, wanting to come in, and you have to allow him to come in. The principle is there for the unbeliever. God is crying out to you and calling out to you and chasing after you because he want to save your friend. He want to bring you in to the place he's already destined and created for you, friend. But you got to allow him to come into your life. Verse number eight. For if Jesus have given them rest, he gives us rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of other days? There remaineth therefore a rest, watch this, to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also have ceased from his own works as God did from his. Friend, you see that right there. Let us labor therefore and enter into the rest. Let us labor therefore enter into the rest. Least any man fail after the same example of unbelief. Friend, you don't want to fall short of what God has promised you because of unbelief, friend. Come on, come on, friend. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is standing in the way. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is on God. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is keeping you from experiencing the promises that God is making you for this year of 2019, friend. The only thing, the only thing that's keeping you from having what God wants you to do, from keeping you from entering into the rest of God and the rest of what God has for you is fear, doubt, and unbelief. And we're going to talk about it, friend. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. The time is growing now right now. But I promise you this. I promise you this. If you meet me back here next week, we're going to discuss it. We're going to talk about this fear, doubt, and unbelief. And we're going to talk about what God is wanting to do to get the miracle working power to operate in your life now, friend. This is the year that is supposed to change life. Uh, uh, Isaiah said it was the year that King Uzziah died. He saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. Friend, we're going to take a look at that if the Lord say the same. If the Lord say the same, friend, we're going to take a look at that. Because that was the day that every cha everything changed for, for Isaiah. God changed his life. He saw the Lord, experienced the Lord. He saw heavenly things moving around in his life, and God changed his life that day, and he was never the same after that. And that's what God is going to do for you, and this, this is going to be your year. 2019 is going to mark the year that everything changed for you in your life if you can just believe God, if you can evict fear, doubt, and unbelief. If you can do that, friend, everything that God is talking to you about, you're going to be able to have. I got to get out of here, friend, but I promise you, God is willing. I'm going to see you back here next week, same time, same channel. I want you to know that I love you to life, and I'm praying for you. And hey, by the way, I thank all of you who are praying for me and who have been encouragers to me. God bless you and know that Bishop is praying for you, and I love you to life. Until we see each other again, bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye for now. People all over this world, yeah. People all over this world say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus.